Is Peter Stark a thing? By Forest Warriors. Chapter 5, Steve. Steve wasn't sure what he was expecting when he finally returned to the Avengers compound, but this wasn't it. Tony was conversing with a few workers of Stark Industries. One of them was a teenager who was dutifully taking notes, occasionally asking a few questions, but seemed to be writing down what everyone else was saying. Steve paused as he stared at the kid for a few moments. Something was off and his brain was trying to give him an explanation, but not being able to give it a proper name. Steve took a step back in shock. That teenager, he looked a lot like Tony. Well, if Steve was being honest, he wasn't too sure if that was accurate. Sure, they looked similar, but that meant nothing, didn't it? Okay, I'll have a look at it by the end of the week, Tony said as he waved off his workers. I'll send Pete to you with any additional information I may not have noticed. Steve swore he caught the flicker of pride in Tony's eyes as he said the last part. After all, Parker is fully capable of noticing my new details. The teenager blushed and looked down at his feet. The other workers laughed and voiced their agreements before walking away. Their conversation drifted away from work and towards more personal information. Steve watched them leave and then turned back towards Tony and the teen. Don't hurt yourself too much in the lab, Tony said as he ruffled the kid's hair. A hand spotted Tony's hand away. When have I ever done that? I'm going to assume that you don't want me to answer that. Tony sounded amused as he stepped aside. Run along, kiddo. Don't drive anyone up the walls with your rapid way of talking. You say that like it's a bad thing. Perhaps it is. The teen pulled a face and quickly hurried down the hallway. Okay then, I'll see you later, Mr. Stark. Don't blow anything up. No promises. The call was the last thing Steve heard as the teen bolted around the corner. His footsteps dying off as he put distance between himself and Tony, faster than Steve probably thought a human could run. Perhaps it was a teenage thing. How would Steve know? Tony looked soft, for lack of a better word. His ex his expressions were soft and open, his eyes full of something that wasn't the selfishness and arrogance that Steve was so used to. It was love, pure and simple, ease and relaxation of being around the teenager. But his smile wasn't there. It was wistful and almost remorseful, longing to keep chatting away with the kid, but knew that he couldn't do so. There were jobs that needed to be done. Steve took a deep breath as he stepped forward towards Tony. Jobs needed to be done. By the bullet. Garony was not lost on him. Hey, Tony. The billionaire quickly turned his head towards the super soldier. Steve stifled at the hurt he noticed in the warmth in Tony's eyes vanish as he noticed him. He deserved it. He knew that he did. Who was that? His soldier stiffened. Why do you care? We're friends, aren't we? Tony's eyes darkened. No. Steve bowed back a flinch. He took a deep breath to calm himself down. Honestly, he doesn't know why he was surprised by Tony's words. He deserved that. Tony didn't need to trust him at all, so he should logically drop it. Yeah, he didn't. But a teenager? I thought Stark Industries didn't hire teenagers. Steve carried on, ignoring the warning look that Tony had sent him. We don't. Not really. Tony answered as he began walking down the hallway. It was usually an indicator of ending the conversation, but Steve had missed his friend. So, even if he got yelled at, he wanted to talk with him, but couldn't back off when Tony told him to. At least that's what he told himself. S then why the sudden change of heart? Steve asked as he followed right behind him. You aren't the type to be around teenagers, or children for that matter. Are you forgetting about Clint's kids? I remember. Tony's tone was clipped. Times change. Plus, I'm not in charge of Stark Industries anymore. Purpose or potential in him, and I promise to watch over him, since his specialities correlate with my skills. Steve looked at him curiously. You're showing interest in what he's doing. Tony's lips pursed. Steve knew he sounded surprised and rude, but he couldn't take them back now. What had been said, had been said. He just had to live with his decision to say something like that, even though he knew it was not in Tony's good books. He is a smart kid, 
Jenna replied curtly. Plus, you have to show kids that what they're doing isn't stupid. His voice dipped, but Steve could hear his words clearly. Unlike my father, who couldn't be fogged with whatever I'd done. Steve was once again reminded of the fact that the Howard Stark he had once known was not the same one that Tony grew up knowing as a father. It was unusual and unlikely for them to be the same, yet so different a person. How could Howard be that terrible of a father? Sure, Steve was no stranger to terrible fathers. His own father was one. Thankfully, he had never really got the chance to have a relationship with his father that lasted as long as Tony's did with his, because Steve's dad died long before he ever met Howard. Of what, Steve sadly could not fully recall. Tony had spent the majority of his life believing that his parents died from a car crash, not being murdered by a Hydra assassin. Steve cleared his throat. So, who is he, exactly? That caused Tony to stop in his tracks and pin Steve with a look that was harsh and aggressive. Steve found himself unable to move or try and backtrack. Tony's voice was low and cold. Who he is, is of no concern for you, Rogers. I don't want you speaking to him. Especially since he is under my protection. And I do not trust you being around him. Nor any of my workers in general. Stark, we need to trust each other. Steve started. Yeah, and that trust vanished when you refused to tell me about my parents' actual cause of death. And then leave me for dead in Siberia. Tony growled out. Don't come at me with all that trust bullshit. Steve backed away and opened his mouth. But he was cut off by another voice. Mr. Stark? They both turned to see the teenager cautiously approaching them. He looked at Tony and glanced at Steve, with something flashing deep within his gaze. Steve didn't really want to think about the implications of that look. A look that he'd been on the receiving end of with Tony. Something clicked in his head. The teenager. Was this teenager actually Tony's kid? It would explain why he was comfortable being around him when Steve clearly remembered Tony saying that he wasn't really one to be around kids. Sure, he liked them well enough, but just then Steve could hear a push of protectiveness within Tony's tone. One very similar to a parent who didn't want someone being around their kid. On top of that, the fact that he was an intern at Stark Industries. Even though SI never took on teenagers before this. Tony saying that he didn't want to do the same thing that his father had done. Clearly talking about this teenager. Too many things made sense once he looked at it in that light. What is it, kid? Tony's entire demeanour seemed to shift. Only slightly. I thought I told you not to burn anything down. One time it happens and you don't trust me? The teenager huffed, though he didn't actually look hurt. More like this was a regular occurrence and conversation to have with Tony Stark. Steve could see the eyes of the teenager light up, though it was subtle. He, clearly, he looked up to Tony, or at least to him for guidance. Before, Steve wouldn't have questioned that. Even now, he still did, but Steve had to acknowledge to himself that he, no, anyone else really, didn't know the real Tony Stark. They all only saw the Tony Stark he wanted them to see. Those were very different people. Tony shot an uneasy look towards Steve before approaching the teen and flinging his arm around his shoulders. Patting his shoulder and he looked like he was about to drag the kid closer to him. The teen even looked like he was about to lean into Tony's grip, but managed to stop himself in time. Most likely due to Steve's presence. Tony looked at the teen and when he spoke, Steve knew that if he didn't have enhanced senses, he would have missed it. You didn't actually do something, did you? Someone had to get you away from Rogers, the teen replied simply. Steve found his heart tightening, but sighed and managed to find it in himself to walk away. This wasn't something that he was meant to witness or be a part of. That much was clear. That didn't stop him from hearing Tony's next lot of words. You're a good kid, Pete. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. Okay, so a bit of a confrontation there. And Peter getting Tony away from Steve to stop the argument from getting any further. Oh, Peter, you beautiful sunshine child. 
Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, guys on non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.